Him till we meet our Lord. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهديه الله فلا مدل له وما يدل فلا حادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أما بعد My viewers, I want to greet you with the greeting of greetings of peace and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Our discussion of today um, is about zina and its implications. Alhamdulillah for Islam. Zina as we are all aware is one of the grievous sin in Islam. And what I mean by zina, of course, you know, is illegal sexual intercourse, either between an unmarried boy and unmarried girl, or between married man and married woman. It is illegal and it is punishable under the Sharia. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his glorious Quran, in Quran chapter 17 verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wa la taqrabu zina, innahu kana fahishatan wa sa'a sabila, sadaq Allahul Azim. In that particular verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not go near to zina, that is fornication or adultery, because it is an evil and opens way to other evils. Uh, my viewers, if you could, uh, uh, on the, if you could all agree with me, you will, uh, you will know that other rules or other ways of uh, methods of zina are varies in our society today. And today we don't even look at those things that brings us closer to zina as anything. What are those ways or what are those aspects that brings one to closer to zina? For example, today. We are fond of seeing girls or people, boys and girls, men and women, hugging each other, especially in institutions and other places. We also have seen that to, to, you know, to kiss a, a lady on the way or to shake her or to do, you know, and to look at her in an immoral way today has become the order of the day. There are many ways. These are some examples that leads us to, that leads closer to Zina. And just like I have said, today, if one does not, you know, finds himself or by practicing or, you know, by partaking in that type of habit, he is looked upon as somebody who is not exposed, as somebody who is not socialized, as somebody who is not even civilized in our society. But in Islam, it is a, an irregulation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a Muslim must not come closer to Zina. And just like I've said, these are some of the ways through which people come closer to Zina. And why did Allah say this? Is because it is a very, it is a very big offense. It is, uh, it is categorized among the major sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed punishment for, he who, for whoever commits Zina. And uh, these punishments are in two categories. The first one is stony, is, 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 is no, hundred giving uh, the, 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 the adulterers or, or fornicators hundred lashes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in, uh, in Surah Al-Nur, chapter 24, verse 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Azaniyatu wa Zani, Fajlidu kulla wahid min huma mi atajalda. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the fornicator girl, female, and the fornicator boy or man should be given hundred lashes of the king. And the verse continues by, you know, encouraging or informing the Muslims that they should not look at that as way of, you know, giving mercy. They should not be merciful or show mercy by not, you know, giving those that giving out that punishment. And that even Allah says in that particular verse that some community of Muslims are expected to come and witness the punishment. So this is to tell us how grievous it is. And then, in, in fact, during the time of the Prophet, 
we have had that such type of punishment was inflicted uh, during his period, uh, during the time of Omar ibn Khattab, that such type of punishment was inflicted. And then again, we have uh, the second type of uh, punishment, of course, which is um, stoning to death. And that also was practiced during the time of the Prophet. One of the prophetic traditions says a man came to the Prophet and asked and told him he has committed zina. The Prophet ignored him. He repeated and repeated uh, that statement. And the Prophet when he turned to him, he said, are you, are you in your senses? And the man replied that yes, he was in his senses. And the Prophet instructed that he should be stoned to death. So what I'm saying here is that uh, this punishment were you know executed during the time of the prophet and even after his time so this to tell us how grievous the sins of committing zina is in the sight of islam and that is why islam right from the own good right from the beginning islam and allah SWT encourage muslims never to even go to, uh, uh, closer to zina through several actions that just like i've mentioned have become order of the day today and then if you, how do you now get away from those things? Allah SWT also mentioned in the Quran, of course, that Muslims should cover their body, even if it means a man. Allah SWT talks about the hijab. He says again in Surah to nun he said, say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and cover so that they uh, and they, they should lower their gaze and they should not uh, uh, they, they should uh, practice modesty. And then he said, Wa kullil mu'minat min abu salim, fuzu, fuzu and that they would say to the believing women also that they should also lower their gaze and protect their chastity. So this tells us that uh, by lowering our gaze, we are we are you know coming, we are not we are going distancing ourselves from uh, from uh, what is zina or adultery or whatever uh, we can attribute it to. So it then means that when we do that, you see, this is the, the idea. This is also one of the reasons why Allah SWT, you know, encourages Muslims to practice modesty. And just like I've said, modesty is uh, expected of from both male and from both from both male and female. So when we when we appear modest in our appearances, in our characters, in our behavior. In fact, we are distancing ourselves from uh, the case or from the coming closer to adultery or fornication. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to protect us, continue to guide us and give instill into us the fear so that we will not fall into the trap of shaitan by committing adultery or zina. Again, uh, just like we know, Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us, especially where Allah says, do not do any, any action or do not commit any action, know that there are wisdoms because the consequences are enormous or the consequences are not are bad on the society, on the committer and the society uh, at large. So that is the case of adultery and fornication or zina uh, in general. When one commits zina, there are a lot of implication and consequence such as inviting the wrath of Allah. Allah has prescribed, Allah has instructed us never to go near zina and so when a man commits zina it means he, he or she is inviting the punishment and the anger of Allah on him or her. May Allah protect us. Again, the idea of marriage and not to mix up with so many you know, many men especially for the woman, is to protect her honor and lineage. So when a man finds himself committing zina or a woman fighting, there is, you know, there is that tendency that the lineage, lineage may be disrupted. And then that can also pro, you know, create problem in our society. Again, issue of honor is paramount. Today in our society, we have seen that many people that are involved in zina are not much, uh, they are not regarded and respected by members of the society. And sometimes they are even tag names. Sometimes even when one goes to look for a marriage, ah, this person is, a, is, a, is an adulterer or she's an adulteress. And that, you know, you know, you know, brings her down. 
bring, there is no respect in her or in him uh, uh, in, in that situation. And so the honor, we need to protect our honor. We need to respect ourselves. We need to show that, uh, that we are people, we are believers. And then again, another consequence is that uh, one is termed as, you know, as a sinner because of that uh, a habit he has imbibed or that habit she has imbibed. And that is why you see that people sometimes they may not even have confidence in him, confidence in her, dealing with her, and she stark different names such as prostitute and what have you. So this, this means that there are a lot of consequences and implications. And again, we have also seen in our society today that some girls, after men have, you know, have deceived them or bo their boyfriends have deceived them and uh, make them to commit dinner with them severally, they rejected them. Sometimes the boys, you know, lure the girls by, you know, uh, ensuring her uh, or, uh, uh, or promising that he, he will marry her at the end. And so they go into that aspect until when he he now became satisfied and said no i cannot marry her and sometimes you see sometimes he even you know begin to have sus suspicion he begins to suspect her that since she has committed adultery or zina with him there is that likelihood that this is what she does with other men and for that reason he may not marry her so the implications are are, are many and then until when we are able to stand firm and then sometimes again because of the society we have found the society the, the tradition and the the, the and the, the custom have been mixed today so much so that in some societies it is it is believed that it is okay for a girl and a boy to have intercourse before marriage and they only look at it as a bad thing as after marriage for a woman to involve in illicit or outside or illegal intercourse after she's married. For some societies, it both is haram, just like we have in Islam, whether one is married or whether one is not married, having illegal is intercourse is totally haram and prohibited for all Muslims. So, alhamdulillah, for Islam, we are expected to abide by the teachings of Islam so that we can be God-loving servant. Allah will like us, Allah will reward us abundantly. And that is why you see, even in the issue of this fornication and zina, it is natural we know that uh, Muslims or people, human beings in general, they have the urge. But Islam has also given provision on how to take care of ourselves, especially when, and especially when one has the urge. And that is why issues like secluding yourself between a boy and a girl alone, it is also discouraging Islam. All those are ways and uh, aspects of you know, protecting one from falling into the uh, prey of zina or falling into th that habit of zina. Because when one tends to protect himself, distance himself from all those things, temptations otherwise that may make him to commit or to even think of committing zina, you know, it distance him. And then again, Rasul do not forget, he has also advised us that for those of us that are not married and we have the urge that there is one thing we can do and that is fasting when we fast it you know it 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 breaks that desire of uh, of having sexual intercourse especially when we are not married uh, alhamdulillah uh, we kept on thanking Allah for this religion, Islam, because Islam is a complete way of life for every Muslim. And just like we kept on saying, when Allah says, do not do anything, it is for our own good. It is for our own benefit. And then let us look at the wisdom behind that and let us not be tempted with, you know, out of shaitan. Do, do not forget, shaitan has promised to to, to destroy this society, to destroy humanity with different, especially through disobedience of Allah. So I want to use this opportunity to remind myself and my viewers that Islam is total submission to the will of Allah. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed zina as a grievous sin, we should be seen to distance ourselves from even going near Zina, not to talk of committing it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings, to forgive our sins, and to make us his righteous servant. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah. La ilaha illallah.